welcome to Sports Heads. I'm Kevin Cato, and we would like to introduce our new sponsor, Red Zone Sports, and we appreciate them coming in. That's why we're in this fabulous studio we're here today. But i also like to introduce to you my main man here, Cecil Martin, fullback, former fullback, Philadelphia Eagles, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the Oakland Raiders. And also with me is the editor, the UK editor of Lindy Magazine, Simon Millam. Okay, he said Millam because I keep calling him Millham. That's but his name from now on is going to be Ham. So whenever you hear Ham, you know we're talking about <laughs> Simon over there. <laughs> but we're going to get with it. You know, Wembley is this weekend, yeah. and the Baltimore Ravens are the visitors against the Jacksonville Jags. And you look at that Baltimore Ravens team, Cecil, you know, you look at numbers, and what kind of numbers stand out for you with them? You know, the biggest thing with me is the Baltimore Ravens running game. I mean, they got these two they got these two running backs that has that team, the number three rushing team in the NFL. I mean, you got Javorius Allen. I mean, he's a leading rusher. Terrence West, he's got two TDs. That's what stands mm -hmm. out for me. Yeah, I agree totally. I mean, they're, they're no names. We didn't know them until the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, they've got a great young defense as well. They've got some big names on there that you, you will, but they will be big names in the future. Um, but for the third straight week, you look at this game and you think Baltimore faces an offense with plenty of question marks. I mean, Blake Bortles has struggled. I mean, he went nine for nine in the last, uh, last quarter, mm -hmm. 145 yards and a TD. Did throw a couple of picks and they were tipped interceptions last week. But, you know, this, this is another game where you look at it and you think, can they overcome their, their problems? They're a team that's built to run, Cecil. They're, they're a team that can't come from behind, in my opinion. Averaging 127 yards a game on the round on the ground are the Jacksonville Jags. Baltimore in the season are 2-0. Jacksonville Jags are 1-1. Are one one. But another game, a big one, Cecil. This is one of those games for you from way back in the day. The New York Giants are traveling to your first team, your baby, your baby, the, the Philadelphia Eagles, New York Giants. New York Giants haven't won a game yet. Eagles 1-1. One well, I mean, look, this is an exciting game for a lot of reasons. And, you know, just like all the British fans and all the fans, even from America, that are coming over for Wembley and excited to watch the game at Wembley and be a part of that, this rivalry, the Eagles and Giants, is, is, is as serious as a heartbeat. When you're talking about the That's serious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as a heartbeat. And you're talking about the fans. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the big thing for me is, you know, I think the Eagles have won 14 out of the last 18 matches. You know, that might go back to back when I was playing in the game. But at the end of the day, I don't know if the New York Giants are going to be able to, you know, hold it down with the Philadelphia Eagles in this game. But they, they are having a tough time. So you can never tell what can happen with the rivalry. Yeah, it's true. But it isn't really a rivalry, as you said. I mean, you look at it and back in, in September games when they played, the Giants and uh, the Eagles are 9-2 and two in September meetings in Philly. Um, the Giants have no, never lost four consecutive meetings in Philly, though, for uh, since I think it's about 2004. So it's possibly there's a trend there that you look at and you think, I might just like the underdogs there. The Giants are six and a half point dogs. But I mean, if you like aerial displays, this is the game for you. You don't want traditional running backs and fullbacks. Forget fullbacks. I'm sorry, Cecil. But that's, <laughs> you, know, you can't have a fullback in this. <laughs> the, the Eagles pass the ball 69.7% of the time. The Giants are passing it 72.2% of the time. Um, but I look at this game and think, where's Brandon Marshall? He's had a couple of catches and a massive drop. It's time he's got to step up. You're talking about the quarterbacking, but Carson Wentz is, is getting it done. Carson Wentz, 298.5 yards per game is the passing attack of the Philadelphia Eagles, which is third in the National Football League. But the thing that jumps out at you even more about Carson Wentz, 692 passes already in his football career after only 18 games, which is second in the history of the National Football League for your first 18 games to Andrew Luck, who had 693. So he's going back there slinging the ball. You know Doug Peterson. Peterson. You know him. Talk to us about him as, as a football coach. I mean, I think he's really proved himself. You know, he came back to the Philadelphia Eagles and worked on that staff. Um, he proved himself enough for Andy Reid to bring him over to the Kansas City Chiefs. He became the offensive coordinator there, helped that team to be a dominant force. Um, and then he got his nod from Jeffrey Lurie, the owner of the Philadelphia Eagles. So if you want to know what he is as a coach, I think you not only look at his progression in coaching, but where he's coming from. He was backing up Brett Favre at the Green Bay Packers. 
You know, he he started for us in, in Andy Reid's first recruiting class, mm-hmm. first year. It was me and Donovan McNabb, and Andy brought him over to make sure that the offense could be learned and that mm-hmm. Donovan McNabb can can be taught by someone who understands that's, it. That's, that's good. So you got you and Donovan McNabb. There's something wrong with that order there, ain't <laughs> Well, I mean, it might be. It might be. But, you know, <laughs> there were some other guys part okay, of that I team. You, there were some you. other guys. You know, what, you know what I really like about mm-hmm. Carson Wentz? He's not afraid to test a secondary, but he's great on third downs. What they've got to do a better job of is second down. Mm-hmm. That's the key for them this weekend. Mm-hmm. What about the uh, another game of quarterbacks when you've got the Atlanta Falcons undefeated visiting the Detroit Lions, who are also undefeated, both of these teams at 2-0, and oh, you have two explosive offenses here. But yeah, a couple of little things are happening on the defense here. Which one of those quarterbacks you like in this game? Um, for me, I think it's, it's Matt Stafford. But the, the issue I've got with them is the fact that they've beaten Arizona and they've beaten the New York Giants. And both of those teams have had problems along their offensive line. So they've had plenty of possessions. Uh, Stafford's done everything he's been asked to do. They look a good side. But I think the schedule is going to tell us a little bit more in the next few weeks because they've got to face Atlanta, they've got to go to, they've got to face Minnesota, and then they've got to face Carolina. All good defenses. Uh, we'll see how. You know, this is a real test against. But them I'm, I'm going to go Bill Belichick on you. Go on. Our next game <laughs> is against the Atlanta Falcons. That's all we're moving on to. We're moving on to Atlanta. We're not. We're not looking past the Atlanta Falcons. That's what we're dealing with right now. It's hard to gauge what, we're, what they've really done in the first two weeks. That was my point. Yep. Um, and I think you're going to find it, it evens out a little bit in the next few weeks when they play some really decent teams. So as, as, as a football player, former football player, did you guys ever look at, well, you know, we beat this team and they really aren't that good? Well, here's the thing, and it's interesting that he brought up the games that they have going on because yep. I think that as a football player, we're only looking at that game. Mm-hmm. But as a fan watching the game, you're, you're sometimes looking down the road, you know what I mean, and seeing where we are. Mm-hmm. So I think that, you know, when you, when you talk about where are they, what have they done, and who do they have coming up, you know, especially in the world of fantasy football mm-hmm. and, and, and all these other stimulants mm-hmm. of, of, of engagement with the game, you know, it's, it, it's sometimes okay to look forward, but not if you're the football player or you're the team. And, and this team is going against an Atlanta Falcon team that's for real, you know. And, and this week is going to be key for them because you know as well as I do, when we get down to the end of the season, it could be, it could be that one game could be the difference between you getting into the playoffs or not getting to the playoffs. Yeah. So everyone is important. What do you think about the Atlanta Falcons as far as recovering from that debacle that they had in the Super Bowl where they had it. All they had to do was shut the door. They allowed New England to come back and win it. And you got that little thing, that little man that's sitting on your back. I was wondering how they were going to react over the summer. But right now, they're one of a few teams in the National Football League that are standard 2-0. and as a, as a former player, how did you guys view your opponents? Well, I think what you just said about Belichick and it being, you know, that game is most important. And how you rambled off, you know, what, what the Detroit Lions have coming up. Yeah. You know, they both have relevance. You know, as a football player, as a team, it's all about that particular week. But when you're talking about the fans and you're talking about all the different stimuli that's out there for engagement with the game, like fantasy football and so many other mm-hmm. things, you know, the fan is, is looking towards, towards, you know, the next week. Shoot, the, the fan is looking towards the next week to see whether or not my team has a shot to get to the playoffs, which goes back to the most important point, And that is the end of the year comes around. You could be one game out or one game in to get into the playoffs for it to be a whole another season. So they both have relevance, but at the end of the day, for a player, it's all about that week. Two teams that are both 2-0 uh, and o on the season. And I remember having uh, Mike Holgram on the uh, show and talking to him once, and he said to me about, when well, you get two teams that are very equal, always go with the home team. The Detroit Lions are the home squad in this one. Another game, the Oakland Raiders. And the Washington Redskins. Oakland Raiders, another one of those undefeated teams at 2 0. Washington Redskins, 1 1. Redskins got, just got by last week. The Rams beat them in the last moments of that game, lost to Philly in week one. You're looking at me and you're saying Oakland 71 points in two games. That's phenomenal output. They've got their swagger back. David Carr's, uh, Derek Carr's healthy again. 
you know, and, and you look at the offense and it's so diverse and, uh, you know, Richard Sherman is probably sitting there thinking, I wish I'd never seen that sorry receiver, you know, because Michael Crabtree's having a season in his first two games. Um, they, you know, they're looking a, a lot stronger. You expect lots of points in this game, Kev, mm -hmm. but traditionally, actually, between these two, you don't get many points between Oakland and Washington. Oakland, they go to Washington, they've won their last three. Whereas Washington, they've gone to Oakland and they've won the last three. So you look at it. So I it's think bad it's being be, a home I, team in this it's series. It's bad being a home team in, in the current it's current scheme of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. So I mean, you're looking at Oakland, they're three point favourites. That number's going to probably rise towards the, towards the, uh, the, the weekend. Um, and, and Monday night, the bookies will be looking to get their money back as well on Monday, the big Monday night games. Um, but this is, you know, it's a rematch of a of a Super Bowl that was back in the day. Was it eighty four? I think it was nineteen eighty four. Before my time, but the Raiders I got you. won that as well. Mm -hmm. but I, love, I, I love how you throw that history in there, <laughs> man. Yeah, you know I'm I mean? an old like, guy. I'm hey, an old guy. You got that encyclopedia in there. But I'm gonna tell you something that's that's really interesting. The Washington Redskins, they're number three in rushing, which means that they have a chance to control the clock. Mm -hmm. And if they can control the clock mm -hmm. and they can still run the game great, um, mm -hmm. their running game be great, that'll open up some lanes in the passing because the Oakland Raiders are number one in points. I mean, you already, you already mentioned how many points. That's, that's astounding how many points yeah, they scored. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but it, at the end of the day, you need to be on the field to score those points. Yeah, so Washington's, it'll be interesting. Yeah, Washington's coming off the game with the Rams. They ran for over 290 yards mm. on the ground in that game against the Rams. So you look at that number and you go, it's not a consistent number. It's an overall number when you look at them. So can they come back and can they duplicate it? But you talk about the running game. What about your man that's with the Oakland Raiders? Give them that attitude in that backfield. Are you talking about Beast Mode? Oh, that's what I'm talking about. You're talking about Beast Mode? That's what I'm talking about. Okay, talking about I ain't no you talking about Beast Mode okay. Beast Mode. <laughs> okay. But I want to tell you one thing about beast mode you know and, and how great his career has been there's something to be said about someone getting a chance to play in their hometown mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and he's a guy that's always done a lot in the Oakland community being from there and to play there and live there and, and be a part of you know the the, the home team mm -hmm. I think that, that's put a whole another boost on that man's leg and and people can talk about how old he is or whether or not he lost a step, but his power is still strong. Yeah, and he also uh, he's fueled by Skittles as well, so they've obviously got something going on. A big big key injury in that game yep. is is Washington tight end uh, Jordan Reed. He could be out. It looks like he's going to be out. I think that's going to be significant for Washington. Well, he definitely stays on the uh, injury list. But our final one we're going to talk about is the Dallas Cowboys, one and one. Arizona Cardinals, one and one. They mentioned old and older quarterbacks. You know, Carson Palmer has now started to come around, especially since they lost Mr. Johnson, you know, who goes out with that big injury. Mm, he's in your fantasy team yeah, as well. Yeah, he was. So he no was, wonder he you mentioned that. Oh, he was. He, he was, was, man. He was. Can't be anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'll so, get as many carries as he's going to get. <laughs> Let's be honest, Carson Palmer's struggling. They've had a revamped offensive line. Um, you know, they don't have David Johnson behind them. They're coming into a game where Dallas was flat out embarrassed in Denver last week. Um, we, said, we said last week Denver could be an upset there because they were, they're now 20 and 1 in the first two weeks of the season in that mile high air, that rarefied air. Mm -hmm. So that's something to look for next season, maybe. But um, Arizona actually got a really good record against Dallas. They've won seven against the last eight, seven out of the last eight games against the Cowboys in this series. If you were the fullback for the Dallas Cowboys, for Ezekiel Elliott, what would you be saying to him? Well, first off, I'd be saying, look, man, calm down when you leave the facility. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, let's, let, let's stay out of establishments. Okay. Okay, let's stay in the book. You know, let's stay focused on what we're trying to accomplish. Um, you know, like I know I make jokes about yep. Ezekiel Elliott, but at the end of the day, you know, I think I, and I hope that he's learning his lesson, mm -hmm. you know, because of the things that have happened. But aside from that, aside from that, he had a tough week. Mm -hmm. So the one thing I'd be saying to him, Ezekiel, don't worry about what happened last week. Don't, don't worry about how Denver just beat you down, okay, and stumped on you and made you feel real bad. And, and you weren't used to all of that, okay. I'm going to tell him, don't worry about that, okay. even though I'm mentioning all of that, mm -hmm. because we're with you and you're with us. And it's not just about me as a guard. It's about us as an offense, mm -hmm. because we are the ones that if it's up, if, if it is to be, it's up to me and it's up to us. Now, with that being said, Dallas Cowboys are coming off a loss. And this Arizona Cardinal mm -hmm. team and, and Bruce Arians, you know, with that cool Kango he wears, mm -hmm. when y'all watch, you know, yep. he's like the coolest coach in the league. Uh, it, it's going to be a battle now mm -hmm. because Dallas is motivated because they really got, they really got exposed, you know. And Arizona, I mean, they're 30th 
rushing, ranked thirtieth mm. in rushing. You know, it's a good time to good time to go and play. You know, the Cowboys for them, it's it's a, a welcome tonic. I mean, I look at it and think Dak Prescott. He had uh, a couple of interceptions last week. He had uh, you know had sixty percent completion rate. Uh, you know, with that offensive line, how really good is this offensive line? That's the question I want to ask. Which one, Dallas? Dallas. Mm. How good is it? You know, they've come up against Denver and they've got nothing. Was it Zeke Elliott gets nine yards, eight carries, eight carries, nine yards, whichever way around it was. You know, that frankly, for, for an elite back that everyone's saying he is, I, I've got to question the offensive line and I've got to question uh, some of the play calling as well. So you're saying, you're saying if, the, if, if I'm the guard and I'm saying that to him, he, he's saying it's all line. <laughs> well, hold on now, you know. <laughs> Y'all didn't look all that good last week either. Now, I was getting my head beat in, but, okay, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up because I think it's interesting, and, and we don't talk enough about the offensive line, but the Dallas Cowboys offensive line has have been associated with dominance for so long. I don't remember a time when us ever saying that the Dallas Cowboys offensive line had a bad day. Mm-hmm. And maybe they just had a bad day, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, we got to give credit to the defense, but, you know, I, I think as we look forward to, the, especially mm-hmm. this game, yep. how are they going to respond? Because it, when you ask the question, are mm-hmm. they really that good? I think, it's a, I think it's a legitimate question. But if you've been dominant for so long, does that mean you can't have a bad day? Mm-hmm. And that. so the answer to that isn't right now, right? But mm-hmm. the answer is, how are you going to handle the, the, well, Atlanta, or the, uh, the Arizona Cardinals. Without a running game, Arizona has got to go to the air, and that's going to play into that. You know, that's going to help them, mm. simply because Nolan Carroll is out. Mm. They're now, he's out with concussion, cornerback for Dallas. Mm-hmm. They're now down to two cornerbacks with the injuries. Mm. Orlando Skandrick's out as well. You think Arizona's going to exploit that? They're going to have to try. I mean, they've got, they've got no running game. Mm. Without yeah. well, well, we want to thank our sponsors, Red Zone Sports, for allowing us to be in this beautiful studio. I also want to thank my main man, Cecil Martin, there for me, Eagle. Who Raider else? and Buccaneer. Is that what you're with? Yeah, Oakland okay. Raiders and Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Much love, everybody. Okay, <laughs> and, and, and Simon. Bam! Simon! The man! The man. We want to thank him man, as, man. as well. And remember, if you want to get ahead, check in to Sports Hits. See you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for watching Sports Hits. Don't forget, you can subscribe to us on YouTube, but you can also hit us on Twitter, Instagram. We would love to hear from you. We're trying to take the program from next level to next level to next level. Enjoy.